I'm, I'm sure you interview a lot of people, and I really love how you've allowed us to figure out how we feel and how we experience her photographs and her process through other people from different fields and um, different backgrounds, the way they understand and relate to her photography. Uh, what was your starting point, um, and, and how did you figure out this cosmology of a film to talk not only about her photography, but about everything from art to philosophy to poetry to humanity? Um, well, some of it was reading her books. Um, she's written a lot also in her books that are primarily photography, so I encourage people who are interested to read and look at the books. So um, reading her writing, talking to her, and then I think maybe Bob Peck down in Philadelphia at the Natural History Museum was one of the first people we interviewed. The two people who worked there also, the Paul Coleman who didn't like the <laughs> distinction between different ways of looking at wormwood. He didn't like but, the metaphors. <laughs> the kind of metaphors he didn't like. Right. But um, it, we filmed down there, and that was so fascinating that it, I think it really grew from there. And just there was so much to see. And, and we were also very lucky that Dennis Purcell um, shot a lot, shot most of that footage. Um, at Buckminster's in Maine, which is now totally gone. So we had this wonderful treasure trove of footage that was shot, however, over the years there. So that really informed, I think, a lot of the structure of the film, wanting to see that place, because you can't really see it other than, I mean, you see it in the photographs, obviously. But I, I have to say that I've been enormously lucky being a member of uh, a male chauvinist driven <laughs> generation to have married somebody who is not that way. Mm -hmm. And he has been endlessly generous mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and helpful and ingenious. And he has come up with solutions and then passed them on to me and then allowed me to take credit for some <laughs> ongoing um, practices. Something that I love I mean, It's amazing because a lot of men from my generation do not do that. And even some of the slightly younger ones still <laughs> do not do that. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And you're walking around with no lighting, no tripod, your Nike and, and your one single lens, <laughs> and uh, just climbing atop like mountains of, of discarded objects or inside like collections and you're like a little bit of an archaeologist and an explorer. I can see a little Indiana Jones in you <laughs> with, your, with your little Nikon and um, I was wondering, you know, um, seeing yourself and your process on the screen and, and reflecting upon your life as a photographer and an author, um, and I'm sure, I know you know yourself, but having an out-of-body experience watching the film, how did you, um, how did that relate to? Well, it's, it's, I said it was odd, it is really peculiar because this is, however, uh, embracing the footage is supposed to be and should be or, or refer to, it doesn't refer to many periods of time, it refers to just a few. And I didn't always use the Nikon, I went through a view camera phase and, and uh, pack camera phase, and I didn't even use a real, go into a dark room for two and a half, maybe three years after I first started photography because I was so interested in and dependent on all kinds of Polaroid mm -hmm. film. So, and, and as for eschewing lights, I have had projects in fancy, from fancy people occasionally, and um, I don't ever use lights, and I would go into somebody's office and tear down the curtain and put the object in the corner. And next door, somebody who's working on the same process would have set up a bank of lights and have three assistants and, and basically been doing the same thing. So I mean, I just say, you know, I just <laughs> don't care for that light. But most of the time, I, was, I really wasn't allowed in to many places. You weren't? Mm -mm. No? 
No. Tell us about that. How come? No, I don't. With your experience? But, but you made... You I made it. <laughs> eventually got in there. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. Oh, you amazing. persisted. Well, I just was fascinated by the material, and I thought that this would be very uh, good for a person's character to have to work with something that they didn't like, rather than just go for something that was easy to work with. And when I was talking about the monkey skins, they are really not easy. And I just simply did it not to be punishing, but to see if I could fight through this aversion and get a good photograph, because that is what counted, was to get a good print. I love your, your silhouettes of the hanging monkeys. They're so, <laughs> I love that how you use them in your collages as well. They're so amazingly powerful. We have a question over there. Um, I went through a phase where I was just making them for the, for the big camera. And then I usually destroyed whatever it was that I'd made. And then um, I've also made them uh, for the, their own self. But there's something for me about collage, ultimately, that is a little random. And I'm, I mean, I think, well, it could be this and it could be that. And, and yes, it just looks fine that way. But I really think I prefer um, photography, I think it's harder. <laughs> we have time for one more or two quick questions. Yes, over there. Uh oh. Okay. Small question. Really? Relationship between truth and beauty. What's the relationship between the relationship between truth and beauty? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I mean, I what what I really like is what. James Mars, Jim Mars, my editor from um, Norton and Quantic Lane Press, had to say about how I haven't photographed, made anything beautiful through my photograph, but, but maybe thought has been stimulated through it. And I'm, I think that I thought that was such a good uh, a statement of whether or not it's about me or not. I thought it was a really interesting th way of putting things. Could have appeared at the towards the end or in the middle or almost, you know, because it's he's really sharp. Now, quick last one over there, down there. You? Yep. You, you. Okay, what? In, well, if she's asking if you embrace the term kitsch for this process of like bringing different things together, right? Yes, I think that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, right, seems good at the time. Okay, the last one, yes. Well, I did spend several years at the beginning uh, really only photographing people and loving looking at them. And yes, I really loved that. And for one reason or another, I just decided to make it harder. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for inviting us. Thank you very much.